Hey guys, what's up? Aru. Did Fosalor really have to die? Well, to my understanding, it's not that she had to die because of Egeria's and Fontaine's original sins, but that she needed to die because of the divine problem that she had to deal with and because she was trying to carve a path to a new age by not only deceiving fate, but also by shaking the very foundations of the laws placed on Tevat, that being the seven divine seats and the heavenly principles. So welcome to another video of someone who wants an Archon skin. Yes, we're calling a trial against every other Archon in this video, and revealing a deeper meaning to Fosalor's 500-year opera and why she needed to kill the quote-unquote Hydro Archon. This video will focus on Fosalor's true plan that was enacted behind the scenes, leveraging a different plan to save Fontaine, i.e. the prophecy, the meaning behind returning Nouvellet's sovereign power, the reason behind the Seven's creation and how to destroy it, and finally Celestia's non-functional and decaying divinity. This insignificant thought has been in my head for the remainder of 4.2 and is exactly why I think that Fosalor's death has a deeper meaning compared to other Archons that died previously. Honestly, I just wanted to justify why Fosalor had to die because I mean, look at her costume. Look at how she looks. It's awesome. Now, when Fosalor defied the laws imposed by the Heavenly Principles, nothing is more important than having every single thing that Celestia is watching in her control. That includes the Seven themselves, the visions that they give out, and nearly everything within Tevat affected by the Heavenly Principles. And getting those won't be much of a problem thanks to my friends over at Genshin Star, today's sponsor. Genshin Star is a fan-made Genshin Impact merchandise store licensed by Hoyo themselves, and they sell merchandise that only a real fan would want to have. That's you. Visions, weapons, keychains, characters, clothing, elemental monuments, and so much more. They've also got a ton of other great items that I can only give justice to by showing you these bunch of pictures. Wanna gift your friend their waifu slash has bondo in the best way possible? Genshin Star. Looking for a nightlight while wanting to be stared at by your favorite Archon? They've got you covered. Or maybe you just want to gacha your life even more. Well, they can spark that excitement too. Now, Genshin Star is also the perfect place to look for and gift to anyone who is both a fan of Genshin and appreciates fan-made merch. With Christmas coming up, this is the time to find that perfect gift to someone that you care about. So click on the link in the description and use code ARU8017 for 10% off on your orders. Thank you very much to Genshin Star for sponsoring me today. Back to the video. One of the metaphysical problems that Fosalor had to deal with after taking the seat as the god of justice was the inescapable prophecy placed upon Nigeria and the people of Fontaine. Metaphysical meaning metaphysics, which studies the principles of existence, identity, change, space and time, cause and effect, necessity, actuality, and possibility. All of which falls into what Nicole, the witch of world direction and order, studies, and is the narrative that Fontaine was supposed to go through by way of Celestia prophecy and is imposed directly through the heavenly principles' laws. But this prophecy is not that Egeria had to die as punishment. No, the heavenly principles aren't that nice to just kill someone, but that the Hydro Archon will be alone after the people of Fontaine's sins are washed away. This is highlighted in the slates that we found and it was the main reason Fosalor had to create her 500-year opera. But that isn't what she needed to do. What she had to do do was to outwit the heavenly principles, allow the prophecy to be fulfilled but not entirely, and save the people of Fontaine. Because this was the dilemma given to her after Egeria's passing. But because the prophecy is only pointed towards the Hydro Archon, regardless if it was Egeria, Fosalor, or Farina, what she needed to do was shake the divine throne created by Celestia, that being the Hydro Archon throne. One of her objectives was achieved through the trial and the Flood, which was to save Fontaine and its people. And after she dies, her plan was still in effect through Nouvellet becoming a full sovereign and basically having the choice of rebranding Fontanians from Oceanids into actual humans or turning them into full-fledged Oceanids. A choice that only Nouvellet can make, by the way, after becoming a full sovereign and cannot be stopped by anyone else. And finally, using Forina as her proxy Archon, pretending to be a god in the eyes of everyone, which which includes other gods and Celestia's prophecy and spectators slash outliers like the Traveler. This is all fine and dandy as a plan to thwart and deceive the heavenly principles as well as saving Fontaine, which did happen and it did work, ostensibly, as she mentioned. But that doesn't explain 
why she needed to die. What it does explain is giving back the sovereign power to the Hydro Sovereign and destroying the Divine Throne created by the Heavenly Principles. Pozzolores' plan wasn't just to deceive fate itself, but to change the very foundation, the laws that Tevat has, and giving it to the Udex who bears the grudge of dragons as well as hatred against those who sided with the Usurper, Nuvolet can now, or is already on his way, to redefining the definition of Tevat's laws. From what I understand, the authority of the Hydro Sovereign that Nuvolet now has only came from Fosalor after she died. And it seems that you can't return to someone the authority of dragons that was ingrained into you by the Heavenly Principles. So that's one reason why she needed to die. But another reason, which encompasses the entirety of the world and its foundations created by the Heavenly Principles, is to break through the institution created by the Principles. That is, the Seven. Yes, it's the only thing created by the Heavenly Principles that is tangible or perceivable in-game and isn't just known through lore books, artifact description, and dialogue. We even play as those Archons and are even hyped at how overpowered or meta-changing they are. But we also know that there's a stolen power or authority layered on top of their own. Up until now, we have two original Archons and two Archons that pass their elemental authority to someone else, which was still technically themselves. So that authority that comes with the title of quote-unquote Archon was never given to any other god nor a sovereign dragon until now. Returning sovereign authority to the rightful dragon lord has only been highlighted in Fontaine through Fosalor killing herself and in turn giving it to Nouvellet. And now Nuvolet is looking to judge the remaining usurpers and that each of those gods who are recipients of elemental authority will all pay a debt of blood. Fosalor mentions in her conversation with Nuvolet that death wasn't meant for Farina or Fosalor but for the Hydro Archon. This means that the title, power, duty, servitude, and divinity, or for a lack of a better term, chained authority that comes with being a quote-unquote Archon, which was created by the Heavenly Principles thousands of years ago through the Archon War, is what Fosalor intended to destroy, and is one of the laws of Tevat that she wishes to change. And to do that, she needed to first destroy the title of Archon and everything that comes with it by first killing herself. The second thing she needed to do was to find a recipient that won't simply be the next Archon or next God, as well as making her wish to be truly human and saving humanity come true, which is exactly why Forina is a normal human with a vision and also why she had to make Nouvellet the Udex for 500 years. Nouvellet was the only dragon that was exposed to being a human long enough that he would forgive them. If it was any other dragon who wasn't exposed to humanity long enough, they would either leave humanity with the power of a sovereign that wasn't chained to Celestia or even exact their vengeance, which happened long ago. And that includes a pep Ejdaha and Duvalin who are still distant and wouldn't even care for humans. Now I'm honestly just pissed but also in awe of what Venti has been doing since 1.0 because he might have already figured out the heavenly principles without having to lose his life in the process. But there are some things that Venti did differently from Fosalor that may also explain why Fosalor needed to die to give Nuvolet his authority back. Let's watch a scene from the good old days of 1.0. I'm not wanting you to listen to the Abyss Order doesn't mean that you have to listen to me. Freedom, if demanded of you by an Archon, is really no freedom at all. Is this the power of the animal Archon? But I am no longer part of the Four Winds. Even if that's so, you still protected us regardless. Now spread your wings of freedom and go with my blessing. 
So in this scene, Venti gives his Archon power to Dvalin, and Dvalin, who is an animal dragon that has been given the animal Archon's power, can now technically be called the Dragon of Animal. So what's the difference between Venti giving his Archon power to Dvalin, and Fosalor having to go all the way as to kill herself before giving the Hydro Authority to Nuvolet? Firstly, Dvalin was born from elemental energy from the heavens, while we don't know how Nuvolet was born, and secondly, Archon power and sovereign authority are two different things. Now, I did mention that being an Archon comes with the authority of dragons, but being an Archon means that you are still under the Heavenly Principles' laws, of which the Heavenly Principles started the Archon War and gave the Gnosis as well as the Divine Throne of an Archon to whoever wins it. A seat at the seven Divine Thrones created by the Heavenly Principles to rule and control each of the seven regions that were once under under the Dragon Lords' rule. So that means that giving away your Archon Hood isn't the same as destroying a Divine Seat and returning a Dragon Authority. The only way to return or give the Authority of Dragons without still being part of the Heavenly Law is to destroy the Divine Throne of an Archon, of which Venti did not do. He gave the power of the Animal Archon, the Divine Throne that is tied to Celestia, to Dvalin. In contrast, Fosalor destroyed the Divine Throne of Hydro by enacting the death penalty to the title Hydro Archon, regardless of whoever it is, shattering the seat of divinity that was meant for one of the seven created by Celestia, of which Fosalor is that current seat. Meaning the only way to return the power of the sovereigns without being chained by the heavenly principles is by destroying the divine seat of the seven first and then giving it to a sovereign dragon. This explains why a blood debt is what Nuvolent wants from the other Archons and not just a passing of power. Because again, Archons are under Celestia while a Sovereign, like Nuvolet as of today, is not under Celestia. Unless he as the Eudex can have the other Archons abdicate or destroy their thrones in some divine way. I mean, Nuvolet right now is the Hydro Sovereign who is also the Eudex that just takes care of Fontaine and its people and Farina. He himself says that his duty as the Hydro Sovereign and the Eudex of Fontaine shall coexist through him. So maybe after all is said and done, he can destroy a divine seed without having to kill a god possessing the title of Archon. What could save an Archon from dying is you liking, commenting, subscribing, and hitting the bell so you can stay updated to my channel. Thank you. Now let's talk about how Fosalor managed to destroy a divine seed of the seven without awakening the heavenly principles. Keyword, awakening. The Heavenly Principles has always been thought of as this divine and enigmatic entity that should never be crossed in any way. Defying the Principles will cost one's peril, and if an entire civilization were to use any forbidden art or possess any divine knowledge, a calamity would surely come. Examples of this are, of course, Kanria, Gurabad, and King Deshret. But as of today, the Heavenly Principles seem to be a decaying divinity that's barely keeping whatever it thinks of as a threat at bay. Nuvolet's character stories and vision story are possibly a revelation to what happened with the Heavenly Principles and quote-unquote the one who came after, which possibly is the second one who came after the fall of the Dragon Lord era. Nuvolet and the previous Hydro Dragon were actually the god of life of the Dragon Lords. It also has Egeria's reason to be created as well as her original sin, while also saying that the creation of the Seven and the Gnosis was sort of a last effort to control the loathing and resentment of the world. It also seems to imply that the principles were trying to control the quote-unquote original order of the world. But it also mentions Nuvolet's own doubts against the Dragon King Nibelung regarding their views on the Black Void and how to defeat it, possibly pointing to the abyss and forbidden knowledge that he brought into Tevat. This information is likely a secret that the Heavenly Principles is keeping that should not be known to humanity, which does make sense why they would impose erosion and have the Ermensoul make changes in memories of history, plus a third-party entity using the Ermensoul that can't be tracked by the god of Verger herself, while also having the sustainer of heavenly principles who is there for punishing any who would commit arrogation or use a 
of forbidden arts and divine knowledge, which is pointed to many times already to be the abyss. But it would also make sense why Nahida would say that the principles have been dormant or absent for the past 500 years, paired with what we know from the all-devouring narwhal, where the universe is invading Tavat, and the newfound knowledge we have from Skirt regarding ascended beings and the other abyss dwellers, the heavenly principles are basically keeping the universe, or maybe the abyss, outside of Tavat, but are barely holding it together. With everything I've mentioned about the Heavenly Principles' secrets, this means that the Seven are basically the last line of defense against any who would dare to change those laws. But nearly every Archon isn't exactly siding with them, at least voluntarily. Every Archon isn't really in good terms with the Principles and is finding their own way around their laws. Zhongli and his stone tablets, Makoto and A using the Sakura tree, and not to mention puppets, Venti with his ballads, and Nahida with her allegorical books all of which are ways to keep records of history that are being erased by erosion and the ermine soul's changes. But now we have Fosalor, who destroyed her divine seat within the seven, so the remaining six seats must also be destroyed. But the first four seats we know have either abdicated their seat in some way or have recreated their ideals for the better. But I don't think that alone meant that they destroyed their seat just by doing that. Technically, two of those seats could have already been destroyed. Ruka Devata and Makoto fell in the cataclysm, but so did Egeria, the first Hydro Archon. And her divine seat wasn't destroyed, nor was the prophecy denied after her death. Fosalor still needed to kill herself to destroy the throne despite Egeria's death. So I think it's not as simple as dying and slash or passing or abdicating it to someone else, but taking out the very essence of Archonhood. Hence the need for Fosalor to be very specific on whose death it was for, and why she needed so much indemnitium, because she needed to destroy a divine throne. And to destroy a divine throne, you would need lots and lots of energy. If you prefer that all the previous Archons have already given up their authority, then that's fine, but Nouvellet will still judge them as traitors who joined the usurper's side, and is apparent in his voice lines on how far he intends to go to with the Archons, who he still deems to have claimed and is still in ownership of the other dragon authorities, which means that the other four divine thrones are still in place. Just as the Hydro Archon judges other gods, so too does the Hydro Sovereign. But this time, it's to judge the principles themselves, a faction that Nouvellet was never a part of. And whatever punishment must be enacted to those thrones will be up to the new uprising of the Sovereign's decisions. So what can we expect in the next few patches? Well, Natlan being a place of evolved dragons who aren't welcoming to a dragon sovereign would mean that the current holder of the Pyro Authority has possibly done something that blurred the lines between the principles and the sovereigns, leaving Nouvellet with a very conflicting predicament regarding the Pyro Vishaps and the Pyro Archon. As mentioned by Shbalanka about Nouvellet, someday when they return, their true ordeal will begin. An ordeal that will be difficult indeed since humans and dragons have coexisted and how even more difficult this ordeal will be once we know of the secret of the Pyro Archon, Murata. That is, if she still is the Pyro Archon. For all we know, an evolved dragon might be seated on the divine throne created by Celestia, which could have happened to Nouvellet and Fontaine if Fosalor didn't destroy the divine seat of Hydro. We can also infer that the Fatui is trying to take all the Gnosis in an attempt to either recreate the Third Descender or to bring back the world of dragons by taking what they think of as a dragon authority. Piero does mention to Signora that she will be buried in the entirety of the Old World, but the Shivada gemstone mentions the Saritsa burning the Old World away. So the Fatui either want to wipe out all the dragons or wipe out the current heavenly principles. And there we go, a wild and borderline crazy analysis and theory on why Fosalor needed to die. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, thanks to Genshin Star for sponsoring this video. Comment below, will we ever get an Archon skin or will we be able to revive the previous Archons? Now, I was actually thinking of either a Fosalor or Farina video and I even made a poll and saw that people really wanted Farina. But after reading up some lore and re-watching some of Fosalor's clips, I just got more invested 
into a full solar video than Farina one. But I will get to that Farina video in the next one since I also have some things that I want to say about Farina both in a lore sense and a more philosophical and connected to people. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Bye!